yeah, everyone. Okay, just, now we go. Now, now just keep right, the party going. Started right. Okay, there we what? go. I'm nearly pulled. Look you. at that handsome face. Hey, God damn, man. <laughs> How's it going, guys? Good, mate. How you doing? Uh, we're doing well. How are you? Yeah, all right. Not wasn't too bad. convincing. <laughs> are you sure? I'm a, no, I'm a, well, I'm, I'll be honest. I've had this cough since um, our last UK tour. He was just Dude, being a little bitch too. I've had a cough for like yeah. two weeks, two times now. I've had to cancel like recording vocals for our demo on the bandmates. And I reckon they're probably just thinking, he's not very keen. We might just get someone else who's better. In their defense, yeah. you are a little bitch. <laughs> and no means bitch. Yeah. I got the black lung, pup. No, this, this <laughs> fuck is not going to be around. I hate it. Anyway. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I, I was just thinking this is going to be fine. And then because I'm coming to Australia and I'm coming a week early before the tour as well to sort of, oh. um, you know, try and get, because I hate just coming somewhere. That's so smart. Shows and leaving. Mm. Um, and then I was like, okay, that's going to be annoying trying to go to the doctor's. And you know, when you start thinking, what if I then get ill again and it'll ruin that? I'm sure it is just one of those, you know, lingering things that isn't going away. But I did, you know, do the, oh, I'm scared, call the doctor. It's like, <laughs> I have a, I have a, I have a very lame cough that doesn't hurt at all. <laughs> I'm perfectly fine in every other way. What should I do? And he's like, yeah, leave it. <laughs> like, just rest. You'll be fine. So what is it? What do you go to? <laughs> you do sound a bit cocky. What do you go to remedies yeah. there? You're rocking like honey lemon tea. <clears throat> are you gargling salt water? Or are you just like, whatever? I mean, I do I do that when I'm on tour. But like when I'm not on tour, I just, oh, I just can't, I'm very lazy. Like I can't be bothered to do that process of the, I mean, I know Honey and Lemon, it really isn't that much effort, but it's like, it's that extra, you know, yeah. element of doing that What I'd rather just have a coffee or a, or a normal tea. So yeah, I don't really do any of those remedy things. But then when I'm on tour, I'm ill, it's like every remedy under the sun. It's you like, kind of have to on tour though, I feel. This list, yeah, it's like the placebo as well. When you're on tour, you're just thinking, okay, what can I do? Anything potentially that might just be the that little bit of difference of getting better. So yeah. Yeah, on the on the last tour, I was literally I had this regiment. I'd be waking up, you know, okay, have the uh, have the the lemon the lemon water to start the day to cleanse the body. Then mm -hmm. I'd go on. I had this weird like I don't know if it was because I had the flu as well, like this weird acid reflux thing. We've never had that before. Yeah. Um, so I was having apple cider vinegar for that. Then I'd be onto the like then the then the ginger and lemon. Yeah, then I'd be the then ginger. I'd be then I'd be, then I'd suddenly remember, oh no, I haven't had my ibuprofen. So then I'd bust some ibuprofen. It was like every half an hour, I'd remember something else that I needed to say. By the end um, of the day, you're the world's most through. hydrated man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just so full um, liquid. I always do the thing where like, you're supposed to be well and truly hydrated before you go on stage, you know, like, but I do the thing where I'll go most of the day before I go to do a set and I'll be like, an hour before the show and go, oh shit, I've had no water and think that like just necking like a liter of water is going to help and it doesn't help yeah, and it just yeah. makes me almost piss myself on stage. So that's always fun. Yeah. Well, it's meant to be, it's meant, we heard it was four hours before. You, you, you apparently, it takes four hours for, you know, your body to, to take the water down your throat and actually process it into hydrating your throat where you're actually yeah. going to use the muscles. So once we found that out, we were doing that. I mean, it's, I'm sure it's not exactly for four four hours, but me and Matt would like have the timer on, see when our set time was. And before, literally five minutes before it was four hours before, we'd neck like a litre of water each and just feel terrible. Like, <laughs> just just, yeah, it just around. sits there. You do that thing where you jump up like, and down yeah. and you can hear it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we're a bit more relaxed about it now, but yeah, apparently, you know, that's that, the hydration is the main thing. So, you're yeah, a man that looks constantly. after himself though like you've got a fitness resume look at the, that jawline it don't lie you're a man that's <laughs> got a low body fat percentage you've got to stay hydrated look after those internal you've organs stay hydrated yeah i mean i've i since i i find it crazy i mean i do i do try and take care of myself i go through sort of like you know areas of time you know periods of time where i'm sort of really on it and then typically usually we go on tour and then I let things slip and then you come back and you do it. And then, you know, you go through these different periods, but I find it crazy ever since I started trying to sort of be healthy and work out and stuff and realize how important drinking water is. 
I sort of, your brain sort of clicks. And now when I'm not hydrated, I really notice it. And then I realized like up until like, my entire childhood, up until probably never the age of, like 23. Well, no, I was dehydrated the whole time. I remember being so thirsty as like a kid. Like running around, <laughs> like I've got really. Apparently, there was a solution. <laughs> no, like you know, like you like you go like you go to your lessons. You'd like go play football. You go back. You might like have one sip of water the entire day at like, yeah. a, like a water fountain. Yeah, I remember just being so like tired the whole time as a kid. Like water almost like hadn't been invented when we were kids, and it was only <laughs> since I realised that okay, water is actually good for you to like you know you need to be hydrated to uh to actually enable yourself to work out properly that i was like man i've been like thirsty for like 25 years before i discovered that <laughs> water was a good thing are you um, replacing it with like other sort of liquids were you like a soda kid a juice kid or you just were staying thirsty no i was no just air just yeah. right yeah <laughs> Keep it dry. I like that. I used to work with a dude who was feeling really, really terrible. Like, and he went to the doctor, and the doctor was like, How much water are you drinking? He's like, Oh, none, I don't drink water. And he's like, What do you mean you don't drink water? He's like, I don't drink water. He goes, I drink about, you know, a liter of Coca Cola a day. I have two coffees a day, uh, you know, and I, I don't ever drink water. I drink alcohol at night. We did. He's like, you need to drink water. And the, and he said, but I don't like water. And the doctor just said, do you like dying? Because that's essentially <laughs> what's going to happen. Like his insides were just wow. becoming fucked because he just never drank water ever. I feel like the more yeah. I know you, the longer I know you, the more the, I hear the stories that people you've worked with. I wonder if they tell stories about you as well. Oh, probably. <laughs> I work with this idiot, right? <laughs> There's plenty of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is incredibly dumb. There, you've got to stay hydrated. Oh, spilling. So you're coming out a week early. Is that so you can acclimatize, get yourself prepared, or is that purely for health reasons? So you're not just like rushing straight in the first show? No, nah, just well, yeah. I, I guess a bit of both. Like it's you know, I can't remember. I can't remember what it's like flying from the UK to Australia. How the jet lag hits, or if there is any. I can't remember which it's, way. It's okay. It's worse. It's worse going from Australia okay, yeah. to the UK. Uh, okay yeah um but yeah for me it's like it's annoying like i love you know i love traveling i love being on tour it's one of my favorite things about being in a band um but it doesn't always work out that you can actually you know be places and see them like last sure. time uh we came to australia like just the way the shows worked we had we got to do like a few days in brisbane uh before we got there uh we flew into melbourne like basically went straight to the venue, sound checked, got to go to like the street next to, next door for food <laughs> and literally flew out straight after the show. Oh, yeah. um, so we didn't leave that one street. And then Sydney was cool. Like we got to stay a few days in Sydney afterwards. Um, and I think that was the final thing we did. Yeah, so maybe we had like a week in Sydney, which is great. Um, but yeah, like a few weeks ago we did, um, we went to Japan. And it was a new place we'd never been to in Japan. But the way the flights were booked and the way the schedule worked, what we had to do when we got home, we literally like flew in, like played the show, had like maybe like five hours to kill before the flight the next day. Yeah, and that so was rough. it. And it just like, it just kills me when, you know, you have a great time and it's quite, you know, there's that excitement of kind of packing it in sometimes. Yeah. But when you can, when you do have the opportunity, um, to sort of spend a bit more time in places. And I've, we've got, I've got a friend who lives out in Melbourne as well. So, you know, he's going to just, you know, show me around on, you know, taking the sights, yeah, like sort of relax into it. And, you, and you're going to feel better before the tour as well, because you're not, you know, um, wham, bam, straight into it. So I feel like that's when you're going to get the most yeah, memorable tours too, because you're going to get, you're not just going to be focused on like the pressure of playing. You kind of have, more around it so you can take in the shows themselves rather than just being all one blur yeah yeah they, i mean they definitely do when you're doing the, these quick ones as well they do sometimes just blur in and you're like did we do that in, in that place or the other place you know so yeah, <laughs> yeah i'm really excited it's going to be like a bit of a holiday for me as well so I'm i've got to ask you though now look when i discovered you guys it was literally, I think, <clears throat> pardon me. It was literally, I think, like a month or so after you guys had been here. And I was fucking devastated. And it's been so long since you've been back. You give us some answers, man. Come on. 
We love you down here. We love <laughs> you down here. The truth is, how can I say this? We hate Australia. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Finally, makes someone that's not it's... blowing smoke up Australia's butt. <laughs> no, it's it's you know it's one of these things where you know it's as a, as a band who um, you know have never have never had a release a proper release in Australia, mm. and you know that, that was kind of our first. Um, well, definitely our first two albums. There was there was nothing. So, you know, it's been very much like a word of mouth thing in Australia for us. Um, and it just costs so much mo- money to come over. You know, the the, the the simple reality of it is to to put it all. So you kind of want to make you want to do it at the right time. And we said, screw it. We kind of don't care um, losing money as long as we get to come out like every album. So yeah, the first album. You know, that was like the technology cycle. And pretty much, I think we came out just before the album release. So we had like a lot of the singles out. Yeah. But we didn't have the album out. Then we planned to come out um, just before the pandemic, actually. And then that kind of screwed everything up. And then waiting for everything to sort of come back in the right way and all the plans and the rest of the touring plans to reveal themselves. Um, For this album, it was like, okay, now's now's the time. So. Yeah, I mean, I did, we, you know, we want to come back all the time. We, you know, for us, that one experience in Australia was so good. It was like, you know, it was, I can see why everyone, I can see why every Brit wants to move to Australia. <laughs> because again, we came out, we came out in December as well. So like the weather was beautiful. Yeah. It was like the vibes, the vibes were insane. It was like, we, we probably have a slightly warped view of what life is like out there. Like, oh, our vision of it was like this is just like it is in in home and away this is exactly <laughs> like everyone everyone's just barbecuing all day you know hitting the beach um you know and we were like fuck like we all came we all came back being like we need to move to australia we need to like <laughs> convince all of our friends and family to move out there um because not one of us just can't do it we have to do that as a band yeah, yeah. um and and probably like after like a few months, we're like, okay, that was maybe like we got probably got caught up in that a bit. But like you know, it's somewhere that we would love to come back to and and keep playing because um, it's kind of I think we've got such a such a similar kind of mentality. Obviously, this Aussies and Brits have got that bond. Yeah, um, you know, similar everyone, sense of humor, you know, similar sense of humor. Yeah. People who like a party, people who kind of don't necessarily take themselves too seriously all the time, but mm. like you know enjoy their music as well like i'd say for us those shows in australia were like the uk shows on acid as well like people were just going nuts wow. like That's it sick. was like the, en- the energy was insane um it probably helped that they were like as well as the australian fans there were a load of like pissed up brits on like back- backpacking around who were i'm sure you get more of that this time too yeah. that we were there at the same time um but yeah they were amazing so well so, yeah I'm put, put it this way this time my my brother never leaves the fucking house. He's just the biggest homebody and he's coming to the show in Sydney. Like you guys are enough to get him out. And I've offered him like tickets to shows. He had a ticket to Not Fest Festival and he still just decided to stay home. He actually bought a ticket to come and see you guys. So yeah, he's going to wow. have two beers and be absolutely Legend. loose. <laughs> and he's probably going to fall asleep <laughs> halfway through the set. So yeah, it's going to be a good time. <laughs> On a personal level, but, I'm stoked that it's taking this long because, and I don't know if you've seen before, I took a while to come around to you guys because I don't trust Johnny on anything. <laughs> and he tried to show <laughs> you guys to me before and I was like, eh, not interested. And eventually when you guys came out with this album cycle, we did the first single and again, I was still like, I just don't get it. I don't get it. It was Manchester Super Red. That's also because of the football. I don't like to football. It, and I love football and he hates me talking about it. So I was just like, instantly like, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm not down. You're wrong. And then you got me. Oh, you got me. And I'm in. So I'm so excited. One of, our, <laughs> one of our favorite things, honestly, one of our favorite things on this release was because it was, it was a very strange release for us because you know, we were putting out the singles with zero shows in between. Yeah. So the only, so, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to do this again, um, but it was the only feedback we could get was, you know, the online, the online buzz, which is great, but it kind of only lasts for like 
a week. You know, it's like yeah, people sure. can't show their full liberty. And so really the only thing normally you get is like a load of comments on YouTube or, or Instagram saying, we love the song, blah, blah, blah. You're kind of, you're buzzed off, you know, for a week or a few days and then it's gone. There's not nothing that tangible to really see. People aren't, um, you know, people aren't filming themselves, you know, talking about how much they love the song. It's like one comment. Yeah. But then, you know, we've got nothing to do. We're at home. People say you shouldn't do this as well. So I wouldn't recommend this to other people in bands because it could go very badly. We started watching reviews on YouTube, which is where we discovered you guys. And one of our favorite things literally was the conversion of Nathan on the show. <laughs> <laughs> we, started, we started watching this and we're like, these guys are funny. Like, okay, like, okay, we've got a fan here. Mm, this guy is not so sure. <laughs> mm, okay. And like, I can't remember. It might have been like one true prince. It was one true prince. Yeah, yeah you so hooked me you... so hard with that song. <laughs> my parents as well. My parents were watching your, your your reviews as well. And my dad's got nothing else to do. He was watching all of them, like every every single review. He'd come out of the song, text me. And he texted me, he was like, new review up from the breakdown, gotta check it out. We watched it. And I think once we found your response, we were just texting the boys in the group like, Sai, Nathan did. We did it. <laughs> <Yes>. Finally. <laughs> we did it. You, oh, yeah. So, yeah, that's a that's absolutely a testament to you guys. And probably a, a testament. I, 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 I had to give Johnny that one because he had been trying for a very long time. <laughs> you, guys, you guys were a huge one for, for, for me and my family as well because my, my two kids, like I'm devastated that the show's 18 plus because they – absolutely fucking love you guys they absolutely thrashed that tell technology album and um yeah just like it was it was you guys were such a good band for us to all vibe together over you know they loved singing the songs they could get away with saying the word fuck while they were singing it um dad was so angry <laughs> they but yeah. get away with that anyway <laughs> yeah yeah that's true yeah so but it, it led me to sort of like I've always wanted to know from you guys because the sound is so different and so eclectic and it, it, it teeter totters over the line of so many genres. I don't want to do the, the boring, where do your influences come from? But if you were to choose one band for every member of the band, that would be their main influence. What would you say they were? Would you guys all have completely different influences? Question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, they're definitely all, we've all got different influences we're all quite different um but there's there's definitely like a few bands that we all we all agree on kind of thing um i'd say like incubus are probably a big one for us nice. um and there's something that like i guess will always be kind of part of the dna of of don broco like yeah they're you like probably their science was probably one of the first albums where it kind of i was gonna ask what that yeah. kind of yeah, I mean, like, Morning View's a massive one for Psy as well. Like, he, but I'd say Science is an album where it kind of brought in that, um, you know, it had that that kind of the new metal heaviness, but mm. also had, like, the soulful vocals, the yeah. funk, the kind of, you know, the the sort of more playful aspects of, of, um, of kind of Don Broker as well probably come from that, where, you know, you've just got, like, some kind of real funky bass lines and, like, also, like a lot of the guitar, you know, a lot of guitar bands being a one guitar band as well, you know, Sai Sai loves doing more creative parts where he can doesn't have to rely on a rhythm guitarist. So Incubus had that yeah. as well. So there was yeah, a influence on him from that. So yeah, I'd say Incubus, um, Biffy Clyro as well. You know, they're they're a band um, who. Uh, I don't know how how big they are in Australia, actually. But we actually only came around to them. You still haven't really. We did no, one of their I songs like the last album, album yeah. but then we we were both mm. saying on that one, we just they did not come in a big way to Australia. I'm now yeah. massively into them. After it, it's actually a similar timeline to you guys. I kind of discovered them. I was like, oh, there's so much back catalog for me to go and get into here, and I really like them. Mm. But I know how many people I've played it for, and they're like, I've never heard this band before. Yeah. Yeah, I mean they're they're very like they're very UK centric and and European to be fair, um, and I don't know if it's because like they're Scottish as well. So some yeah, sometimes the accent is just slightly harder for non Brits to get because you know there's just the the slight, I guess inflection of some of his vocals. I can't yeah. I don't know why because like 
for me, they're like, again, as well, they're not like they've got that kind of big theatrical yeah. sound, but they're pretty, yes. they're pretty weird. They're pretty weird as well, though. That's like, I can see why maybe they're not massive everywhere because they're I can not see with the to go into their own like size influence as well, just with the guitar work because it is such clever guitar work for a three piece band. Mm. Yeah. Uh, um, would Deftones be one of them? Definitely Deftones, yeah. I mean, Deftones, yeah. Deftones, yeah, from, from the early days, I think, like, they were, uh, um, yeah, I mean, for everyone, I think, in the band. Um, but it's only recently that I think we've started kind of um, letting those kind of, wearing those influences on our sleeves. Because I think before, sometimes the bands that you hold almost like the highest regard you're like afraid of going near them and oh, afraid totally. of, yeah you're almost afraid of with one thing you just don't want to rip them off <laughs> yeah it's like, for sure. you know there's a there's a balance between being influenced by someone and just like stealing a riff or you know stealing their vibe um and i think deftones were like definitely this band that we kind of hold in such, such high regard where we're like oh shit like you know there's other Do we bands dare? Well who have yeah, and there's other bands as well who have kind of borrowed that kind of Deftone sound, but maybe yeah. doing it a bit more straight up and do, doing it really, really well. Um, mm. So we kind of wanted to stay away from that. So this was the first album where it was more almost like the tones and the heaviness and the, yeah, the vibe without, every time I did it, I tried to like stay away from anything Chino would have done vocally as well, <laughs> because that's such a, a big, obviously a huge part of that band. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're they're like, the way they sort of use electronics as well and and just atmospherics and that yeah and also like still so cool like it's like there are very few bands who can be that heavy and that almost like artistic at the same time yeah. and it never it never feels it never feels cheese it never yeah. feels like lame does it it always feels like emotional and just like powerful yeah just um, they just ooze atmosphere like uh, yeah yeah it's effortless yeah. cool so yeah yeah um so them and fuck it's hard to i mean there's so many bands i mean i think like i okay so i wouldn't say we sound like them in any way but like one of my favorite bands and size to be fair and that and tom really love it too but maybe not as much as size system of a down um oh, cool and while while i wouldn't say we sound anything like them i think we're just like we're influenced by their creativity and the way they um kind of you know that they don't really have any rules they'll just chuck anything yeah, in they're there genre defined and you listen yeah they're, yeah completely genre defying and like even though they've got those sounds that you think are, you know are quite clearly system of a down through the whole back catalog they've got these random musical vibes throughout you know to be fair there's, a, there's, got, like, what, there's a certain four, quirk to, to what they do like yeah yeah. yeah, I think that's as well, like embracing the quirkiness when they need to, mm. but like trying to balance that, you know, and, and be with the quirkiness that comes like the super, a super individual sound where no one, you no yeah. one, you can't really compare them to any band while also balancing that fun, but also that sincerity and that like, you know, meaningful, they're a proper band. But also, yeah. they do just write some. They, yeah, you know, they've got some real serious, deep songs. But they can also just throw some crazy, crazy weird shit in that doesn't make any sense, and they don't give a fuck. And it's just, yeah. and it's still great. So we kind of like that mentality behind behind that. Hmm. Speaking about crazy weird shit, um, I'm not going to ask anything. <laughs> I'm so nervous. <laughs> Wait, a and Johnny got us cancelled. What penis tricks can you do? Uh, no, your your music videos have always had that level of weirdness and quirk and just creativity. How much of a hand do you guys have in actually creating those and storyboarding those things? Because some of them are just fucking out of control, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's it's really a collaboration every time with with the director. I mean, sometimes sometimes we'll come up with the concept first and then tweak it with them to make it a reality because we'll put too many ideas and it's like this doesn't make any sense at all <laughs> um and but then a lot of the time uh i mean the first time we really kind of embraced 
what we wanted to do was um, our everybody video. And, you know, that really came from us going to the directors with a complete blank slate. And we just said, like, we want to be surprised. Like, what was the last thing you think anyone would think of when when watching this video and go from there? And so it's a lot of the time. And that's when we started this relationship um, with these guys in the States um, called Domino, uh, a guy called Ben. And he's just like, he's just full of incredible ideas. So once we started working with them, it was very much like, we'll take this idea, we'll tweak this, we'll, we'll change this, we'll, you know? So it was very, it's kind of, yeah, it's collaborative. Um, the, le the last few, you know, have all been sort of, um, yeah. A very much like uh, I mean, some of them were like ten hours Zoom calls. <laughs> oh, I can no, imagine. Fingernails was such a fun film clip. <laughs> um, sorry, which one? Fingernails. The I think the oh, last one you guys had done. Yeah. And, yeah, I mean, as I said, One True Prince is what got me because it was something different. But the the, the cinematography in that, mm. I was just like, holy fuck, this is so big and epic, and like. Yeah, it, it, even just like the, the little thing, like the color grade on the Wales landscape just was so, so well done. And each film clip has been so individual. Mm. And it's a it's something like for this channel, we genuinely look forward to bands that are like, oh, you know you're in for a good time here. You might not even know what the song's going to be about, but you know the film clip's going to be a good time. And I feel like you guys have set a precedent for that. Is that something that you put more attention and effort into now because of, how kind of important the reaction this sort of like digital review space has become um no i mean i don't think we realized going into it how like great the review thing was like yeah i don't cool. think we'd ever really had an experience of that before on our previous albums um it was quite weird it was like our so our the advice was from our from our label was like videos are kind of i mean which i do get as well because we love music videos you know i've always loved growing up in an era of like mtv and yeah in the uk we had like kerrang and scuzz which played all the rock stuff yeah you know i love a good music video and i'd spend hours watching the music video tv shows and then hitting them up on youtube later but and it was sort of a passion of mine because also i'm like a big kind of movie nerd and i i just like I'm, i love visuals so it's something that i'm drawn to anyway because i just enjoy it um when we started this album like the advice was from from the labor management that like long form media is not a thing it doesn't have as much importance now and i don't know if you guys have noticed watching the videos you do but like the budgets are just constantly being cut while people are putting money into TikToks and social yeah. media advertising and things yeah. like that, which like I understand and I get the need for it. But like personally, I love, I just throw all our marketing spend on like making sick videos because that's my passion. Um, so when we came into this, we were like, we could go down that route, but fuck it, this is what we enjoy. So let's just, you know, if we've got a good idea or we think we've got there's legs in a certain idea, yeah, let's not, let's not like you know save the money for for something else let's just make something artistic and cool that we love and hope other people like it um and like i think in like i don't know if like it feels to me like almost like youtube is having like a resurgence like i feel Massively. like yeah like i feel like i mean yeah i i don't know the stats or anything but i i get obviously tiktok and instagram's big but i feel like people are actually people do have more of an attention span than people give other people give them credit for, for, you know, you yeah. can watch a five, 10 minute video, 20 minute deep dive. Like look how successful podcasts are like people yeah. are, yeah. are, are, are in, like engaging with those over time. Um, well, same with so Twitch streaming. Pe people will sit there and watch a Twitch streamer yeah. for two to four to six hours. Like, yeah. 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 Um, so it was, it was nice. It was kind of like, you know, it, it kind of, it validated our our reasoning for for different reasons yeah. why we went into it. But it was, yeah, it was nice to see people. And like, yeah, as, as I mentioned before, it was like, it was actually super rewarding for us, like getting to see real time reactions. Like yeah. we, I spent way too much time watching, watching YouTube reviews of our own songs. You weren't alone in that. Great. 
that's it's funny great, like some yeah. of these big big artists that we've chatted to that they're all like oh no no we're like that's a thing that we all do we send each other the videos and we watch them like it's i don't think it's even become like a guilty pleasure now it's just become in like yeah, yeah. because it's, it is what you said you never never before could you go and see someone's genuine reaction and have them tell you not directly to your face but what they liked or don't like about something whereas now there's this space mm-hmm. where people like we have people messaging us every day being like can you go tell me what you like about this song that's a weird thing still yeah. to be like oh yeah, people, yeah. people still want that because what you said mtv and kerrang and those things they don't have the prevalence as they used to but there's still an audience that wants it i feel like music fans and heavy music fans particularly they mm-hmm. still love it they still love the music they want to have that connection and they want to be told how to feel sometimes <laughs> like yeah yeah it, i think it, it sharing that sh- sharing the um I think what's so great about your channel as well is like sharing the those emotions that you feel when you watch something. You know, it's like it's almost the equivalent of like watching a, a great movie with your, you know, with your friends, your girlfriend, whatever. And you know, versus watching it by yourself. You're watching it and you're surprised by something, you're like, oh wow, that was cool. But you want that, you want to turn to your mate and be like, How sick was that? Yeah. yeah. Or like that extra that extra boost or if they don't like it it's like what why don't you like that like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. why yeah don't you understand you know like, <laughs> everyone feels things everyone feels things differently um, yeah but yes yeah, so it's it's fun like you you've gone through that yourself and then you can watch your review site and be like oh okay we're, we were all feeling that or, yeah yeah oh, no, so so it is you know it's it's great it's this extra way of bringing people together which is which is really nice um it's the best and you probably can't you can't do that with like a full. I mean, I don't know if people have done reviews of like full movies. <laughs> oh, they, like, do. They, they, yeah, they do. They do. Yeah. For real. Wow. Yeah. I don't know if they sit and watch a three hour video and like live. I mean, maybe they live stream it, but I don't, I don't think people would go. Yeah, maybe they show like a highlights yeah. of that, that thing. You wanted to do it with it for me. Yeah, because he hates horror movies. So I wanted to make him watch uh, uh, the, the it remakes and just get a lot of jump scares and stuff. yeah just yeah. footage of him just sitting in the corner going i hate this the problem with it is and i said this before <laughs> for like reactions i'm not a very reactive person i watch and i like i'll talk about it but i'm not like a whoa like blah, whoa. that's not how i am as a person i'll like talk about things yeah, i get yeah. animated talking but if if i did this by myself it'd be the most fucking boring channel in the world because maybe i'm like huh <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you, want, you want something physical, don't you? You want like a, whoa, yeah. you know. That's what we've got Johnny for. Um, Johnny's the physical perfect. one here. <laughs> I'm actually, the clickbait, the clickbait um, thumbnail. I like my, my missus has never seen the Creed movies. So, and so before we all saw Creed 3, I made her watch the first two. And I was like, you've been missing out so much because she, I've never seen her so honestly so animated she was like feeling every punch and like whoa, whoa, <laughs> like jumping around the stairs. I was like I wish I could like react this, this viscerally to this movie like she was getting a whole nother level of like that's cool punch. I like that like, feeling it you're like did you um, like it babe and she just punches you in the face it was great yeah. <laughs> um but no yeah it was I, I think like yeah that that whole kind of process and it's for us as well especially all the uh all the little kind of weird like twists within the within the videos mm. where you know you're you're you know a lot of the you know a lot of the moments where you're like we should just jump this cut in here because it's like this is going to surprise people or yeah. people are not going to expect this video to take a turn this way like you only get that through a review video because after someone's watched sure. it, like review and be like be like that was sick but when you're watching a review video back and you get that moment where you, I don't know, bring back Beckham or something, something stupid like that, like you're getting the actual review like, oh, here he is, you know, which is, um, yeah, it's really gratifying. So has there been any, yeah. any contact or ha- has Beckham seen that or anything like that? I've always wondered that. Has there been any crossover I don't yet? Know. Well, our producer was at a random farm shop, like, last year and his Beckham and his kids were there as well and our producer pussied out and didn't go and talk to it <laughs> and we were like no this is like your perfect opportunity to show him the video um so yeah we don't know if he's seen it um what about Bruce we Willis? also have <laughs> yeah. so Bruce so Bruce Willis's daughter so Bruce Willis saw the video um, oh great cool 
this is this is actually a really this is like this was fucking cool and we were just stoked when when this came up so we were talking to some directors who were potentially the movie hasn't been made yet and they're not sure that they're, they're in the process of of doing the movie and they want to see if they can maybe use some of our songs for it so we had a zoom with them and they were currently filming a movie with bruce willis at the time no um, and we were like that's random we've just written a song called bruce willis so we sent them and they played it to him on the set and he's not i think i mean i haven't actually listened to his solo stuff but you know he had like a music career back yeah in the, did he I think it was early 90s yeah yeah it wasn't a huge um, thing but he had some it was a huge thing yeah it was kind of i think it was more chill was it acoustic it's more like rock and roll easy listening smooth yeah. rock it's what you imagine um, bruce willis releasing <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I don't think it was his thing. <laughs> I think he's not like a metal guy, and he was like, "What the fuck is this?" Um, <laughs> but, but but like reacted well to it. Like this is weird. Um, and then his daughter actually. Um, this is we're gutted that we missed the the, the Instagram because obviously it expires after twenty four hours. Apparently his daughter heard it and posted about it on her Instagram. Oh, that's um, cool. So that was really cool. So like you know, it's it's nice. It's crazy to think that, you know, we wrote this random song about one of our, you know, you know, movie act 80s heroes, you know, and, yeah. it, you know, it's kind of related to Bruce Willis, it isn't, but he's such a cool dude, we were like, we can't not call the song Bruce Willis, yeah, it sounds yeah. Yeah. fucking boss, to think that, like, you know, within, like, a year of, of cutting that record, like, that he heard it himself is just dope, it's one of those that moments is so where you're like, cool. this is, this is really cool, um, so yeah, so I like to think that you know that that gave him some sort of even if he was like a bit weirded out by the song, <laughs> it gave him some sort of play because the start of the song is definitely the weirdest bit as well because it goes yeah like, yeah it is bit, yeah like, so this weird kind of like voice I don't know what it is it was like something <laughs> I did on when I was just fucking around writing the song on like you know joking around on my Apple headphones like. And we just kept it because it just sounded a bit nutty. <laughs> I um, like that. I think all the best things that way. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, David Beckham, so far not. But I like to think one day he'll hear it. One day. You, got, you guys, are, you, you've got to have some kind of connection, some inroads there somewhere. There, there is. We do have a connection. It's very vague. But we, we put it out there. But the person had just started working there, working on the Beckham residence. Oh. Um, it's, our, it's our managers. I can't remember. It's like two people removed, removed from our manager is David Beckham's dog groomer. Oh. He, just, <laughs> he just started working on the Beckham residence to look. I imagine they've got like 100 dogs or something, you know, in their, in their mansion. And uh, he just started working there and like it feels too early for me to like put this yeah out there. Like, just when you do your dogs just them. put this song on repeat for us just have yeah. it go in the background the whole time <laughs> see if it gets picked up that's so good you mentioned before about social media briefly you said like oh you got sent the, the dm has that been something that you guys have like you said the record labels sort of push towards focusing on that and doing a bit more stuff on tiktok and instagram is that something that you have interest in as a band like you're pretty active on social but is that something that you put like time and effort into or is it just like whatever happens happens and it works yeah kind of that more really it's um i mean we know like i mean social media it's one of those things that like can be amazing but also can be super draining and like um you know just like such a a time and energy sucker when it comes yeah. to doing if that's all you're doing and that's you know that is your completely your job then you could probably manage it a bit better but like we've definitely struggled with dividing the time between trying to be like musicians and doing stuff you know like just writing music for one thing like actually yeah, finding sure. the time to write write new music mm. is weirdly like the biggest struggle in within our calendar because when you're on tour you're doing tour things you know you're preparing for the show and, and and all that and then when you're off tour you're sort of like thinking about promoting the next tour and doing all the social media around that and also um, having some so downtime point, and having some downtime which is super important it's something we kind of didn't do before but we kind of 
I think a lot of people probably realised since lockdown as well. They were like, okay, it's actually nice to take yeah. take a bit of time for yourself and focus on your own like well being because um, you can you know you get carried away and you you end up burning out. So you know we're trying to balance all that. And social media is super important. And you get those moments where you're like you're on tour and you film something because it's just happening and it's it's great and it's like it's easy like you just yeah. film us you film yourself fucking around on tour you post it um you know you get a load of likes a load of views and you're like sick people like us great we're we're, we're relevant um <laughs> but not just doing music and then you can spend hours like working out you know with a we've got a social media team who um we were working with over the last few weeks and you're, you're working out how to fill a schedule when you're not on tour because you're, yeah. you're not doing loads of stuff and it's super, you know, super exhausting and, and, and time consuming working all that out. And it doesn't really do anything. It kind of t- keeps things ticking along. But it's not like, for me, it's not like good content. It's not something you see where you're yeah. like, oh, wow, like I want to, I'm going to watch that again, you know. Um, so it can, you know, it can definitely be this thing that like looms over you and you don't want to do it. But it's also part of the job, so I think that's kind of yeah. something you got to just kind of take in. But I mean, I prefer I prefer being on tour. You know, once you're on tour and you've got like someone, you know, you've got your your photographer with you who's just there to capture real moments, moments like backstage yeah, yeah. stuff. Like I I way prefer that. Whenever it's too forced and you're like, you know, you 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 get sometimes get in your head and you feel lame when you're doing it, and you're like, oh man, like I'm trying sure. too hard now. Yeah, but you so, guys have got like yeah, a pretty like I've always noticed like with anything that you guys do put on social media, even like the the snippets of in the studio was so fucking funny, and it just seems like that sort of stuff just comes so easily to you guys in those moments when you are together because you're just mates that like having a good time and enjoying you know appreciative of what you're doing, enjoying what you're doing, and that resonates so easily through the lens of a camera when it's just capturing those moments as well, which is lucky. Yeah. Some bands are awkward that's, as fuck. Like, yeah, that's true. I mean, that's. I think I mean, we were stoked. We, I mean, we started the process with that. I mean, we didn't quite know before, so we started recording before the pandemic really kicked in. And I don't think we kind of appreciate how important that would be. It was, you know, we've watched loads of like, you know, band recording of documentaries and things before. And we were like, that would be wicked. We should do that this time. You know, for the yeah. first time, that's yeah. actually bring our mate along and he can just stay with us and 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 just see what happens and and record the process um and then with the delay of you know music coming back and just basically having a year of doing nothing it was so good that we had all this footage back banked up yeah Um, for sure and it is easy because like we want you know it was just us in the studio messing about trying to work out how to write a song um that side of social media i really like because that's what i find really interesting when i get to watch my favorite bands is like what goes on behind the scenes how the dynamic works you know seeing you don't want to see everything because then i think you, it's like you know you pull any of the, the mystique away yeah but it's like you know as a as a fan you see you see the finished shiny product when it's on stage and and perfect it's really interesting to see those development stages and and what it's like before so yeah i'm stoked we did that i mean hopefully we can do that again on on the next record um Mm. because yeah for me that's like yeah that's way better than uh you know like trying to jump on like a tiktok trend or something like that agreed which um which how do you find uh, doing occasionally sorry i didn't mean to cut you off there but no no we've done We've done that once or twice where like our social media team like there's this trend really popping off right now. You know, do you mind doing that? And like <laughs> we'll film like 10 versions of it because we're like, this is cringe as fuck. And like, I, yeah. like every fiber of my being doesn't want to do that. And then <laughs> you do it, you send it over, you're like, oh, this is actually okay. This is this is fine. Um, but I way prefer just you know having all things around chatting. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting seeing the feedback from like our audience over time because when we first started doing some interviews it was just because it was like a few of the smaller bands we'd kind of become friends with mm. and we're like oh like come on see if you want to listen to but it's it's so interesting to me seeing the feedback from people now who are like it's so good because we're not 
necessary we're not good interviewers we're just like we're dickheads who can talk to people okay and, and hang out and kind of make it fun and i feel like people get to see like you're saying that a little bit of a different side of the, the artist they like we way enjoy doing that i would happily just do interviews to be honest like because you get to see a side of the artist that people don't get how do you find doing press like interviews and that sort of thing do you enjoy them or is it something that's kind of like oh yeah i know i have to do this for the tour cycle or for the album cycle whatever it is I think it depends. You know, it really, it really depends on the interview. Like, yeah. you know, I, I, I mean, I, I enjoy. You know, I, I'm, I'm fine with like talking to people. You know, I'm not, um, I'm not like a shy person. I'm happy to talk to anyone. You know, I'm the, I'm the person when I'm, we're having, if we're having a conversation with someone you maybe aren't friends with, and you have that awkward moment of silence in between, I'm the person to like constantly fill that. Because I'm just like, this is weird, you know, like, I want to keep a convo going. Um, and I'm like, I'm okay at talking rubbish to fill the time. You're like, I'm fine. I'm fine yeah. with that. So, I knew we'd get to get on just fine. <laughs> yeah. We've made an entire channel out of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so in general, as interviews, like, I, 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 you know, don't mind doing them, enjoy them. But it's like anything, you know, you know, like, with you guys, maybe because I've watched all your videos, I feel like we can just chat and we're kind of, you know, we kind of, not that we know each other at all, but I've seen enough of your videos to know what you're like as people and I can chat. And we have that rep that kind of instant rapport, but you do yeah. have some, some interviews where it's just awkward and and they're asking, you know, you do get, you get interviews where they've, they've probably been told to do an interview and yeah. they're asking like really gen generic kind <laughs> of boring questions that you've answered a million times before. Yeah. Um, and you just think, man, like, I need to get through this. Like you're looking at the clock thinking, yeah. um, you know, this, this is something I would not watch myself. And you know that as you're doing the interview. Um, I, I am not of, performing on this. I think it's kind of different for us yeah. as well, because like, because the whole point of the channel, well, when it started as a reaction channel only, because we watch so much music and we're, we're so like, we, we see so many different styles of songs and artists and videos and presentations and things like that, our questions are never going to be the same because, because every single thing that we watch, every single thing that we ingest as, as fans of music and, you know, somewhat critics is going to invoke a different, like, need for information from us. Like, we can't ask you guys the same questions that we would ask Comeback Kid because you're two entirely different bands with entirely different personas and it just comes across as i guess just disingenuous to just yeah. ask the same shit yeah totally well i think you, that. you guys are doing it we should <laughs> ask him some of our our, <laughs> our questions that we haven't had a chance to ask oh, okay. at some point yeah. sure i was like in saying that what are you gonna do now yeah. i think you also touched on it really well before rob though when you said something about the fact that there's two of us like as opposed to some channels because we do have two different perspectives there's some things where like johnny's introducing me to something or i'm introducing him or something we're both coming at for the first time and so you can, I feel like in the, it doesn't just become a one-on-one -on -one conversation where there might be some awkward time because the other person probably has questions they've been sitting on waiting to ask, or there's like, it does become an easier dynamic. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. You can bounce off each other and, and, you know, see what works and tag. So far, nothing <laughs> worked. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's been horrendous. Yeah. As I was saying, though, we should ask him some of our classic questions. Take him away, Johnny. All right. We'll, we'll give him some would you rathers. <clears throat> I'm going to go old school. I'm going to go OG. Um, you have to wake up with one of these tracks as your alarm clock every single morning for the rest of your life. You have to listen to the entire song as well. I reckon I can call it, by the way. All right. Creed with arms wide open or Nickelback photograph? Oh. I think you got to go Creed. I knew it. Why did you get it? I don't know. I just had the biggest, vi mostly you, to stand on a cliff <laughs> doing this. <laughs> yeah. I feel like you would do that so well. Yeah. I mean, both both great songs. Um, I'm thinking that, like, yeah, I feel like Creed would get you hyped for the morning. Yeah. Well, well, longer. I mean, any, I used to have, I used to do that where I put my favourite song of the moment as my, wake up alarm and it kills oh, all of my favorite songs. I don't know. Also why did I that. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like I, 
for for a few months maybe i'd be like oh this is a great start to the day and then it would kill the song and every time you heard it outside of waking up you just think oh fuck i've got to get up now i've already been yeah. up <laughs> for seven hours but it would it would ruin it so either song is going to get annoying but i feel like creed would just like get you pumped for that little bit longer mm. um and I like uh, people hate Nickelback, but I I do think they are a solid band. Like we they, love the back. Yeah, deny, we, we back the back. You cannot deny they have tunes. Like yeah, he's 100%. a game songwriter. They're heavy as fuck as well. People don't appreciate how heavy some of their their tones are. Um, it. It you are it. always welcome yeah, here. Yeah. See, <laughs> always welcome. Here. I could I could see I could see Photograph getting annoying a little bit quicker maybe. I think that's probably um, one of their most anno- annoying songs as is. So mm, that's mm. having said that, okay, what about same question, but it's Smash Mouth's All Star or Tub Thumpin' Chumbawamba. I know this one, I reckon. Same. I think Chumba Wumba. Yeah, knew it. Knew it. 100% knew that one too. Yeah. That's yeah. just, a, we've said this so many times. And after a while, I was like, that's just a great song. It's yeah. also, it's also a drinking song. It's, it, I don't drink. I still like it. Yeah. Yeah. I get knocked down. It's, hype, yeah, it's, it's a hype tune. It is like, it's a, you know, it's a get up and go. Yeah, that, yeah, that's smash That again would get really annoying really quickly. Yeah, so. every morning. Hey now, yeah. fuck <laughs> off. Oh, somebody wants, yeah, we get it, dude. Fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> Would you rather be Gandalf or Dumbledore? Oh, good question. Um... This could be a deal breaker, couldn't it? Nah, I'll allow both. They both <laughs> have their merits. That's why it's <clears throat> true. <clears throat> I think I'm going to go Dumbledore. Motherfucker. Yeah, no, you're right. Why? That is the right why? answer. But yeah. why is, what's your reasoning? I I just feel like those latest, the latest um, Fantastic Beasts, it wasn't great, but like smooth young Dumbledore. Yeah. You know, just like, you know, just roaming around being like the boss, but um, also just, I don't know. I feel there's more... There's more very like ve- like there's more varied magic within the sort of the Harry Potter world. Yeah. I agree. Like, I feel like Dumbledore. I, I mean, I, Gandalf is just like he's sick. He's powerful, but he's also just a bit grumpy. He's a bit grumpy. <laughs> I think he's he's slightly more one dimensional as well as a character. Maybe there's these hidden depths that we haven't seen yet. Yeah. Um, it you know within the movies because you know they're a bit more straight up. I think there's more layers to Dumbledore. I think he's probably got like a bit of a, he's got more of a dark side as well. Have a bit more fun with it. Okay. Um, also, there's there's more time travel in Hogwarts in a uh, in Harry Potter. Yeah, you're right. Like he's all there's all there's all you know you could you could travel back to the Lord of the Rings time as Dumbledore, have a bit of fun back there, change some some shit. The up. Man, they're singing through his answer. <laughs> I like that so much. <laughs> Um, and then come back to the modern world as well, and you know enjoy all the things you can you know enjoy your. Uh, I don't know, your yeah. coffee. They didn't yeah. have that back then, did they? <laughs> back in the Lord of the Rings days. <laughs> yeah. um, the difficult one then. All right, you're going to go on stage. You're nice, dry, comfortable, ready to rock, headline set in Sydney, ready to go. You have to put on either wet socks or wet underwear. What do you choose and why? <clears throat> A tough question. Uh, hey, we don't fuck around. I think I'm gonna go wet socks. I think I think you'd forget about you'd forget about the wet socks after a while. The wet underwear, it would be like that squelchy reminder, like if yeah. it gets kind of caught caught up there. You know, you, chafy. You, you chafy. can come away with a rash, a brutal rash that then ruins the rest of your rest of your tour a week. So I think no. Nah. It's got to be socks. No, You're right. Have you, you ever right. had Sultana toes? Nah. They're the fucking really? worst. Mate, well, no. they're, Sultana Just toes true. are the worst. But yeah, when your feet are so wet for so long and you your feet just shrivel up, like, you know, when you fall asleep in the bath and your hands go wrinkly like an old man? 
Mine are already wrinkly. I get it. I didn't say it. But it's if we're talking, if we're talking in a headline set, like that's only like an hour, an hour and a half max. Yeah. Like that's not that's that's not the Sultana toes. Yes, you're gonna when you get the socks off and you know what do people do after headline? When you're getting your foot massage, you know from uh, from the rest of the boys after the show. As yeah, you they're do. Gonna enjoy those <laughs> Sultana toes, but you've got the wet you've got the wet underwear on. That's like a that massage is gonna suck the next few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't want to put my boys through the uh, through the uh, yeah the groin massage. Sultana after. balls, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great point that no one else has raised. I said this before. You're thinking this is like long term. Yeah. On stage, you're stomping around, you got wet feet, whatever, but it's an hour and a half. Even if you played a three hour set, it's still three hours, and then you're done with it. A rash is a lot longer lasting and horrible. Duration has definitely kind of made me see this differently. I see. And I hate admitting it's that. It's taken a year and a half, and you're the first person to really bring that up. <laughs> I talk about this because I'm currently training for like an ultra marathon. So I'm running for like five, six hours at a time, and my feet oh, the are. Real. Gr- the chafe is the worst, and I don't get it because I'm running like tights now. But your feet, they're wet from the get go. I'm sweating instantly. They're wet. You just deal with it whatever mm. yeah whereas crotch no thank you man no thank you i don't mind having a soggy crotch anyway. dude we're so excited to have you come out here <laughs> no we're we're so excited to be there you know it's um it's it's definitely it's it's one of these things that like we were so gassed to do right from the start of the album campaign and then it's just taken this long to get it sorted so it's like you know hopefully it's one of those you know good things take uh, time the good things exactly and uh and now the album's out as well like mm. there's been enough time for it to filter through yeah and i think for people who maybe weren't aware of us um in oz it's like you know they've heard the full album they know the drill you know it's going to be it's going to be nice playing to a crowd that's already kind of they know the new stuff so it's yeah 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 that's a good point yeah for sure well we're looking yeah. for some hang time hopefully, yeah, hopefully we get, we get a chance to when you're in sydney up. Have a have so a you, beer or something. You guys are in Sydney, right? We're in Sydney, yeah. Sydney, yeah. awesome, yeah. yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Okay, yeah, come down before the show. Um, we can yeah, we that'd be great. Talk about Satana Toast. John, I'll give you a massage. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that. <laughs> what massage? <laughs> Maybe that's the way we work it out. So I'll do I'll do wet socks and wet underwear. That is fucking you commitment. Can, you can massage both and see which <laughs> see which one you prefer. <laughs> are you flirting with or me which one do you like <laughs> lots <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh, all right dude we'll let you go we know you're a busy man but thanks so much for giving us some of your time we've been trying to make this happen for a while yeah stoked it finally happened no yeah uh, stoked to be on for sure we'll catch you in sydney thanks so much look man. forward to seeing you soon nice one, guys thanks, thanks legend see ya. Legend.